Finally, a movie where you don't know who to root for. <laughs> we saw Deck the Hall, so you know what that means. <laughs> The mediocrity of subpar art. Perhaps we'll find the answer to the question, how did this get made? Hello, people of Earth! And hello, people of Largo! We're doing a live show. Thank you so much for coming out. We have a, a great big show, but before we get started, let me introduce uh, my co-host. Please welcome uh, Jason Manzoukas. You made me watch this movie, assholes! <laughs> and June Diane Raphael! <laughs> and our very special guest for this evening, for this episode, please welcome, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Deck the halls. I got clips. Um, Please, let's never watch them. <laughs> Watching the trailer, I was like, get out of this fucking movie. <laughs> this piece of garbage. I got furious again. Yeah. I yeah. literally saw that my blood started yes. to boil. I'm like, you guys do this often? Yeah. To oh, yourselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like the premise of this movie, just the basic premise. Is right. there a premise? Is, yeah, yeah, there Let's is. crack it open. There it is. was unclear. But I do it believe it's the craziest, most insane well, premise. Well, can you tell, please, because I genuinely I want to know what it was. I want to I, 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 I I have need, a crack after June. I, I think I, I may have a crack after June. <laughs> okay. This is why it's crazy. I would say the premise of the movie is there isn't one neighbor who is our protagonist. Oh, who? Which one? <laughs> yeah. That is already <laughs> yeah. You are off Broderick. track. You are off Matthew track. Broderick. Maddie B? <laughs> Maddie B. Ferris Bueller? Ferris Bueller, and he's a guy who loves Christmas. He's the Christmas guy, which we heard he's about. He's our protagonist? 50 times in the trailer. Yes. I would support that. I think he's the protagonist. Okay. He's I the protagonist. I agree that that's what the movie posits. Well, yeah. Now, here's where it gets crazy, though. Okay. Another neighbor comes into town. Oh, shit. Now, this is us pitching the movie to studios. In any First other... Act, it opens up, he's got a great life. He's an eye doctor in a small town, and he really likes Christmas. I'm in. Okay, in any other movie, you'd probably think the neighbors moving into town is also a Christmas guy and is going to do Christmas bigger and better. That's sure. not this movie. Or is he a... Yes, it no, is. No, it's not. not. Yes. He's no, not yet. He's not. Yet. It's he's not. not this movie. He's searching. Oh, he's searching for his big thing. He's searching yeah. for his big thing. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. happens to be Christmas. It becomes Christmas. It becomes Christmas by default. Well, I would say it's not necessarily Christmas. He just wants to be noticed from for, space. Okay. <laughs> that is what I would say. Yeah. That is what I would say. That's now... Not, it's not... Yeah. Right, so he, okay. you're saying he could be putting lights on for any exactly. holiday? I don't think he was driven by the Christmas spirit. I think that, that I was his, think I think true. that, well, there's so many things. Yeah. I mean, this is about a guy's journey to be recognized. And <laughs> I think to we not all, be invisible. They keep we saying can, he doesn't want to be invisible. Very Kafka-esque, <laughs> very rooted in so many deep things. I, I will say that this is what I kept on thinking. Um, you guys have seen uh, the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, right? Of course. Yes. I felt like this was the movie where like, the protagonist was Julie Louise Dreyfus and the other guy, like the next door neighbor. Yeah. Like, I was like, wait, why are we following the other bad couple? Like, yeah, like, yeah. like, yeah, like Griswold was the well, enemy. Was okay, the other so side. in this movie, I guess you would say that Matthew Broderick's char character had to learn how to not love Christmas as much? Yeah. <laughs> or had to learn how to... That's who knows? Saying, this, yes, this, who knows? Okay, his lesson I guess is they the both have to learn what Christmas actually means but for Matthew different Broderick reasons. But Matthew Broderick seemed to have that already. Oh, no, he was too uptight and too rigid about oh, his Christmas. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right, no, no. You're right. you know. It was too planned. It was too, too planned that he needs to be more off the cuff. And I know that because that. Charlotte tells him so. Well, well yeah. <laughs> by the way, weird that yeah. he is with Charlotte 
when he is actually married to Carrie. Supposedly, supposedly Charlotte had to ask Carrie permission. And what? She got, she got an email from Sarah yeah, Jessica Parker. On. I swear to God. That's what it says. Got an email from Sarah Jessica Parker. And apparently they had one sexy scene that had to be cut to make the PG rating. Oh, shit. Whoa. Oh, he went shit. down on her. <laughs> Meanwhile, with antlers. The other, cu- <laughs> the other want, oh. couple is DeVito married to Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> now, both of these people under 4'10. That was the thing I saw. Like, I was like, it only sho- like that yeah. showed me how short Kristen Chenoweth was because when they're standing yep. next to each other, wow. Yeah. Literally, the and- first thing I thought when I saw them side by side, I go, that's the only reason she got the job. I, am, I, I, I guess. <laughs> or was it to have, like, I couldn't for the life of me figure out, and maybe this is my inability to see beyond DeVito just being a gross monster. <laughs> I spent half of the movie trying to place my narrative on it, which is, well, he's a con man, right? He's a con man who moved to town and he's going to con Matthew Broderick somehow. Well, I could not get that out of my head at all. Right. Because that's, by the way, that's what's really confusing because... It's a better movie. It is a better movie. Well, that, that would happen. There would be a plot. Oh right. yeah. And so, oh, I love plots in movies. <laughs> there are points. There's a point where Danny DeVito turns on Matthew Broderick, and then it's like game on. They're going after each other. But for a while, he which just I'll seems take. Like, which I'll take. I'll take. take. Uh, but I'll take the that. movie posits that Danny DeVito is so amazing at everything, yeah. but just gets bored with it. He sold a car to the guy who runs the car dealership. Oh, okay, oh, this the is, car. Now, this is what I can... In a scene we don't see. And I mean this. <laughs> because they couldn't write it. Yes. They clearly couldn't write that scene. It, it was like it's this. an impossibility. Danny DeVito walks out, like, just stands and goes like this. <laughs> okay, I sold that car. <laughs> for you at home, all I did was just wave my hand at Jason for 30 minutes. Um, but I would like to ask, because that scene only bolstered my belief that Danny DeVito was a con man. Um, what is Danny DeVito's problem? Like, why? He doesn't He seems to, to be things, good at his job. But he gets bored. My issue, again, with Danny DeVito is, is he dumb? Or is he passive-aggressive? Or is he just aggressive? Because at certain points in the movie... He says he's all of those things. Yeah. Like at one point, like scene, the first scene where they meet, he steals his coffee from yeah. him and, and his, his newspaper. newspaper. Like a con man. <laughs> like a con man, and walks to his home. Yeah. So I just wasn't sure what we were supposed to think about that. He just he that's the thing. Like from moment one, person. he starts off as a bad guy. There, seemingly, right. but seemingly. then Kristen Davis has that amazing wife role that just continually just goes. <laughs> It just He's gives, great, gives, and, gives. and we should spend more time with them. Do you know what Wait. I mean? Like, it's always the, like, you know what? You're judging him wrong. I know his wife seems like a stripper, and he's stolen stuff from us, but we should actually bring them more into our lives. Because I guess she's thinking to herself, Christmas here is so rigid. Yeah, they because that was her like big they problem. Have they, a, they're a loosey Christmas. take on Christmas. He's a Hitler there. Christmas guy. Like yeah. he, like he runs a tight ship. But, by but the way, here's the weird about... thing: they set up that advent calendar thing, which where they open up, you know, the little box. National Lampoon like, oh, Okay, too. today's tree day, or today's the day we put on the wreath. But it's never called back. It's never like, oh, these, except for the carolers. Except at the very end, too. The very, yeah. uh, very, very, like the Christmas Eve is as well. But yes. Yeah. But none of the events about... on that tree come into play at any point in the movie. Correct. Can I, I mean, both cool. of you are, are, are working actresses, very funny. Do you think that that, what do you think about that character journey of Christian Davis uh, getting that cookbook? Okay, Kristen well, Davis. First, one of the first scenes we <laughs> see with her, I have actually have a big problem with this. I do, too. Okay, so the I first scene too. we see, she's making some kind of curry dish. Matthew Broderick tastes it and says, very honestly, it's terrible. No, 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 and no. She, first he goes... It's great. <laughs> right, right, right. And then, and then he, he says, says it's, it's terrible. And she screams out, pizza! Yep. Now, they cut, <laughs> yeah, they cut to the dining room table, and they're all sitting around with a homemade pizza. Wait, no, is that right? I don't right? think it was homemade. I guys. think it might have been DiGiorno. <laughs> I think it was DiGiorno. I think you... No, 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 I think, no. It's well, on a pizza, It might like, not have been stone. delivery. It could have been but DiGiorno. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> 
one of those like stone oven. <laughs> this episode of How Did This cook. Come Here brought to you by DiGiorno. <laughs> you cook pizza on. I think Wait, so. You I heat pizza you, on. I yeah. swear to you, she whipped this up that pizza. This is what we should pizza. really okay. figure out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really <laughs> went deep with the pizza yeah. and stuff. <laughs> I almost want to find it right now. I want to know. I think you might be vindicated. No, it was I, I'm, on I'm that on board. piece of tin. I definitely it saw that. It wasn't a tin, Not a tin, Andrew. but a heating. <laughs> it was, but it the was point a is... Pizza like oh, pizza oh, a pizza cooking. rock? No. Like a pizza rock? Yes, no, but you put it was in a there. tin. It was it a cookie. Was not it was like a, a tin. cookie. Wow. <laughs> this is the detail <laughs> that I did not <laughs> look at no, at no, all. Who are you knowing? Anyone have any... Okay, show of hands. Who thinks it was a pizza tin? Did, a couple. Who thinks it was a pizza rock? Yeah. Who you thinks the rock is winning? Movie. Was, who thinks it was delivery? <laughs> who thinks it was DiGiorno? Who thinks it was homemade? <laughs> All right, so wait, so you're 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 hypothesizing Your that she made nothing. this pizza? Yes. <laughs> Well, and by the way, her journey with her cookbook is very oh. interesting. Well, wait, because well it doesn't did, end. Did, wait, did you, was that what you were upset about? The pizza thing? Well, I was upset about it because... Oh, because we were upset about different things then. Yeah. Well, what were you upset about? I was upset about the fact that he then says something to the effect of um, something about cooking recipes from your cookbook or something like that. And she goes, oh, you know, I don't cook those, I don't well, yes, like cookbooks. <laughs> you, it bothers me. Don't you know I don't write cookbooks? I edit other people's cookbooks. No, 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 Jason. I compile other people's recipes for my cookbook. Wait, really? Yes. Wait, so that is really? what she said. Wait. Yes, oh, I thought she was an recipes. editor, not no, a, no, 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 not no, a cookbook. That's what I thought, too. She what? compiles. But it's other people's recipes. But she was very unhappy. And she goes, it I other compile people's them for recipes. books. No I one felt ever like reads. he fundamentally did not know what his wife did for a living. <laughs> My takeaway that, that is take exactly away what I thought. I thought the same thing. His exact wife point. has a job, and he's basically like, eh, your job is pointless. I don't care. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, cookbooks, right? Oh, okay, whatever. Uh, uh, so much so that she had to say, you know that that's not my job. Yeah, and it, and I thought the exact, well, yes. Yeah. Oh, terrible I don't husband think so. and the protagonist of this yeah, movie. Yeah, he was a terrible person. By the way, but, the other really strange thing about her journey, though, is that he says to her, you need to start doing your own recipes. Right. And so you think this is going to be her journey, that she's yes. going to come into her yeah. own as a cookbook author. <laughs> you know, really put her own recipes You've out You've already there. seen her make a bad recipe. Right. FYI. Yeah, so and I don't know how an it's going to go, pizza. but I'm excited to Possibly. watch the Possibly. journey. Now, what ends up happening is that Kristen Chenoweth says, you should do your own recipe book. And then Kristen Davis says, yeah, do it with me. Yeah. And so then the two of them, their friendship was so authentic. <laughs> That's what I love. But here's the thing that I, I appreciate. I do have to say, there are some things about the movie that do hit home. Here's the thing I appreciated about that. It kept Kristen Davis in her place. Right. Don't get cocky, brunette. You need a blonde to get you through this. <laughs> right? Like, hey, hey, hey. No, 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 you're, you're plain. You don't uh, strive for that. Uh, you stay put. But also, Kristen Shadowin goes, and I even... You guys were like, hey, 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 we're all brunettes. We're brunettes. You know that only brunettes listen to podcasts, right? Jason's going to be beaten up by you. a bunch of brunette women after the show. How dare you? Fuck Kristen Chenoweth. Like. But also Kristen Chenoweth, as she's so moved that Kristen Davis asked her to be part of her cookbook journey... She's very moved. And then she goes, oh, I have the title. And then she goes, food, food. I yeah. thought she said food for food, like food for thought, food for... No, no, no it was food, said, food. she said food, food by blankety blank blank. Like, oh, the wow. weird, like... And by the way, that's the end oh, of wow. the journey. That literal line. <laughs> no, we never... No, no, no. That's not true. Wait. Well, they that's reference not it one at Christmas Eve. Eve. One oh, what are they saying at Christmas Eve? When, but it was unclear. No, what they said was when... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so angry. You fucking made me watch this. When, when the guys lose their families and win them back by having some sort of 
oh, nonsense yeah. walk from the hotel all the way through town, which is like in the middle of the street, like with reindeer and garbage. If you haven't well, watched this no movie... no one is on the road on Christmas. Uh, if, yeah, if you haven't watched this movie, don't let anything we say make you watch this movie. But Honestly, that's this what part, you should take away. It is not so bad, it's good. It's never it worthwhile. It is just... Yeah. This part, though, yeah. particularly bu- bummed me out because I was like, fuck you. Even movie logic dictates that this is impossible. <laughs> and the families follow the trail all the way back to the house, and the guys have created Christmas Eve dinner, and they've made recipes from their cookbook. And that's, oh. and it all looks gross. It looks disgusting. <laughs> they are did look like they are a failure. Lesson learned, Kristen Davis and Kristen Chenoweth. Boy, but that would mean that the book was written and manufactured no, they, they, they in a matter of like up. four days. They yep. hold yeah. it up. It's not a book yet. Oh, it's yeah, just yeah. like several recipes. It's, Which yeah, is it's all it's long. ever going to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is clear. But my problem with the Christmas Eve thing yes. is this is supposed to be the big culmination where like they've learned their lessons that being seen from space doesn't matter and loosening up and <laughs> one of those classic and, lessons movie is about yeah. you know that you see in every Christmas, Christmas every movie Christmas. yeah <laughs> having being looser about Christmas is better and they've supposedly learned their lesson by doing nothing yep. there's no evidence they've learned the lesson but the music indicates they've learned their lesson sure it's, it starts swelling yeah and their family that's not talking to them oh. comes back even though they've literally changed nothing about themselves. Well, yes. Except they worked together, To I make guess. a terrible dinner that nobody's into. And then everyone's happy and they're all forgiven. Oh, because but the music you know what? Swelled. They still get to be seen from space. Well, but oh, wait, that's wait, wait, the no, no bonus. Spoilers. It, oh, no, sorry, no spoilers, oh. JK. Here's, before we see that scene, though, I do want to ask one yes. question about space. Well, this is because, my question. Yeah. <laughs> because... <laughs> Just, I hope this is just conceptual. Yeah, I really <laughs> Well, when the twins, by the way, Kristen Chenoweth and Danny DeVito have reared two girls who are Play Amazons. Boy, Play yeah, Play and they're also very tall. How did this How did this but so the we know twins she's cool. first <laughs> introduced the idea of Space Cam or My Earth, whatever it's called, because they've figured out where the hottest guys in school live. Right, they're new to Google the Earth, which they can't say. Okay, so Google Earth. So now they're looking... Which is the moment when I was like, this is that recent? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it does kind of date it. Oh, this movie isn't 12 years old. That is when I looked it up and goes, what year? Because I, the whole time up until then, I was like, this is from 1993. Yep. 100%. And I was like, I can't believe Jillian's in this. 2006. 2006. So when they're looking on, when they're looking on my Earth, they see... My Earth. They see houses that are near them from space. Many. Now, she says how are all they, the houses in town are, are visible. visible. Okay. Except, Except ours. ours. And Danny DeVito's response is, oh, it's because all the bigger houses are visible. Of course, our, you can't see ours. By the way, but their house is huge. But uh, this is my question. Other houses are not visible from space because of the lights on them. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. Why? I would argue okay. that no okay. one else is, no one else has lights no up one like has lights. Google so, Earth doesn't seek out Christmas lights. <laughs> and it is well, not, I guess not, it's not a service. It's not a live thing from a satellite. It's a service that happens in real time. That was the thing that I, made me crazy because then yes. they cut to... Cal Penn. Cal Penn. Cal Penn. Cal Penn. Cal Penn with a British accent. With a British accent. Cal Penn like was like, it. I'll do this movie, but let me be British. <laughs> so and nobody like a, knows who I am. And he's like in a space Center and they're constantly updating my Earth oh, and, to see he, if they can now see the house. Well, and then here's the other thing. He does my, one of my favorite moves. Uh, it's like when you go on like a ride at like Disney World and they're like, oh, hi. Um, here, you got to get in the car. Like, you know, it's like, what are you guys doing here? Like, they, like they're doing a news report. It's like, well, now we cut to the my Earth control room. And he's like, oh, uh, this is on? Okay, uh, anyway, we're working on this. <laughs> no producers? But here's, my qu- here's my question about my earth. Why wasn't Danny DeVito's house visible I don't know. I don't know. But a- initially, wait a second, but this is the thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ted just got down. I just got down on my knees. <laughs> It's, I wish why somebody would come out and put a cape goes, on your back I like wish, James Brown. I wish everyone could see my house from Earth. But everyone, you could see everybody else's house. Yep. So not, You're now not special. You're not special. It's never going to be special. 
Like if you could see right. everything. Sorry. But also, you know what? Right. He actually is special because he's the only one you can't see from space. <laughs> yep. Uh, by the way, that would have shortened okay. the I movie. Could see, I could see a world in which this journey makes sense because I think the kernel of the idea of like I'm invisible. He wants to be. He wants bigger things. What's bigger than space? I get. What's listen, bigger than the universe? If the line wasn't even as well in the trailer of you, we can see everyone else's house but ours. So all he's trying to do is be seen as much as everyone else. That doesn't seem it. Like, right. but the you're right. The idea yeah. of being invisible and feeling that visibility and from space seen, is important. You know, Here, seen. can I just? I just want to just to put. You know, when you make a movie, obviously like this, it's based in reality. Um, <laughs> you would probably go, well, look, if our whole movie is about being seen from space, is that even possible? And the answer is no. Uh, there is too much light pollution on the eastern seaboard to see anyone's house from space. Uh, and so, yeah, so that is basically, you could never be seen from Here's space. another big question I have. Why doesn't Matthew Broderick put up Christmas lights? Yeah. Well, if you noted in the scene as he is asked, as he's walking through the town with his poinsettia plant, <laughs> and the locals are putting up their Christmas oh, tree this. in uh, the center okay. of town, and they ask his opinion, because he's Mr. Christmas, he and they have a Marilyn Monroe on the top with yes, her dress being angel. lifted because something crazy happened. And um, he says, Don't put a lot of lights on, we don't want it to look tacky. Yep, he but has a so thing he, against he's light. Like classy. I see, I like, miss it's that. part of him being so rigid. I miss that. So and, it's yeah. not about him resisting Christmas. No, or, no, no, he no, he's does Mr. Christmas. Christmas. Mr. Christmas, just it's about not Christmas lights. It's about it, yeah. It's about like it's keeping, an understated it classy. Christmas. keeping it classy. Keeping it classy. Like when he does his caroling and stuff like that. Even he picks he picks a weird song. By the way, this movie is full of non Christmas Christmas songs. Like yep. there definitely was an album released for this, and they would play them. It would be like Jingle Bell Rock, and then another song like Holly Bushes are fun. You know, it was like wait, I don't know that, don't one. Know that one. And they would play we're it. Trying like, to launch it. Yeah, yeah. they were really Wouldn't trying to launch it. For the a writers, songs. this movie just be a lot easier if Matthew Broderick was a guy who hated Christmas. Yep. Yeah. Yes. It, I'm honestly, in. Hated I'm into this movie. You know what? Tell me more about this movie. He hates Christmas. This guy moves in. He's like the town, you know, Grinch. This guy moves in across the street who loves Christmas. Wait a second. That's inherent conflict. <laughs> <laughs> loves it so much. I don't that know, he decks the June. I don't know. I gotta away. say, look. I feel like that character is very unlikable. I would maybe, what if he liked Christmas, but just in a different way? Isn't that in a, a more... Different also, way. how do we know he's good at his job? <laughs> Can he kidding. show an old lady that she looks hot with glasses? Oh, that's great. And I like that. And then later hit her with one snowball that knocks her off her feet? And Which old... has no repercussions. Nope. This movie has no repercussions. He falls in a lake, almost dies. He hits a woman with a snowball. They don't go back to it. Well, no. Not only but that, nobody he seems to care. hit someone with a snowball nobody, and she flew yeah. backwards. <laughs> well, she's a frail old lady. There are scenes... <laughs> There are scenes that felt like the, they were maybe added on in reshoots. Like, I, I would like to talk about the sheriff scene. The, the sheriff is a crossdresser? The sheriff is a crossdresser. Because that... Please do. That scene existed in and of itself. It had no context for the rest of the movie. Nope. It's, never, it's never called back. Well, it's, it's never set up. It's set, it's set up, up in the by beginning. the guy at the Christmas tree who says, I don't tell any secrets. The only secret I know is that the sheriff likes to wear women's underwear and blah, blah, blah. I yeah. missed that in the oh, beginning. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I will tell you that what I noticed in the first minute yeah. of the movie, because I was like, who is this movie for? That's what I wrote. Because it's very unclear. Because you're like, okay, it looks it's like a, a family, family movie, movie. But there's but like tons of weird sex stuff. Sex stuff. <laughs> oh, 100%. And by the way, that, I don't know. I, for me, that boy was too young to to have those, <laughs> call me grandma if you will, but to have those kind of sexual instincts toward no. Danny DeVito's twin. I don't, oh, think, no I don't way. think you're right even no, a little bit. No, no. Yeah. He was 10. He's a young he kid. 10. He sees hot girls. He sees boobies. Here's he was all about boobs. 
He's Here's not the deal. like for that kid, even. What's that? Yes, he is. Yes, he he's is. Like he's like 12. 10 years 12 years old. Years. He's no, like 12 he's like 12. Yeah. That kid is the that that kid had the same journey that I had with the Double Trouble twins. <laughs> they were those, twins those. on a TV show called Double Trouble. Oh, I remember they were like, that. No, show. Please, if you know this show. Yeah. Uh, clap. Oh, they're the old people in the crowd. Yeah. By the way, the people like, that clapped are lying. Yeah. I was obsessed with them sexually. <laughs> yeah, I had I was, to be corrected. I was obsessed with that girl on that show where she could freeze time by like free, uh, touching her fingers. Oh, like, what was that? Small what was wonder? It? Out of this world, small, maybe? Out of this world. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the sheriff scene, though, that... Also, Michelle Pfeiffer in Ladyhawk. <laughs> Ooh, good call. And, oh, and Rutger Hauer was just, like, grossing her up. I liked also a lot of the girls on Matthew Rags Broderick. to Riches, the TV show. That's Vintage Broderick. Vintage. Sorry. So, no, anyway, the, the sheriff scene, I get that, now I understand that it was set up earlier, but... Barely. Barely, and it didn't... I guess my problem with it was it didn't tie into the story no. in no. any way, shape, or form. I guess that's my problem with it. Yeah, yeah so that's no, my problem. That's By the way, valid. great point. Because, yeah. because I felt like the movie wanted to have little, like, almost like this town is like Stars Hollow and the Gilmore Girls. Right. Everybody's got their Everybody's got Everybody's their a quirky character, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, and, that sounds like fun. Like, oh, my God, I would love... The dude from Lost. Yes, Jorge Hurley. Garcia. Jorge Garcia. Jorge Garcia is kind of in this movie. But like, in he, such an awkward way. Where, yeah. Who is he? He's he doesn't really. He there, basically has three scenes. The first scene, he like pushes Matthew Broderick out of the way to deem Danny DeVito the king of Christmas. He's like, I'm so happy to meet you. He's like, oh, I have a question about mistletoe. How should I hang it? <laughs> Danny DeVito's like, oh, you should hang it like this. He's like, okay, great. And Matthew Broderick's like, oh, I wouldn't have hung it like that. And then, and then he narrates the speed skating thing. And then at one point As he's just wearing... it's a bigger deal than yeah, it is. Yeah, a big he deal. He is currently on Lost at this point. At this point. time, that's the thing. Wait, he, oh, right. Lost is definitely on the, the air daughter, in two, whatever you said, 2007. Yes, 2006. Yeah. Yes. Lost is on, and also the daughter is currently on Arrested Development, correct? As this oh, happened. yeah, I and guess you're right. And she's in this... And Fred Armis is on SNL. Ar- uh, yeah, I mean, these... People are working. Um, Working hard to forget that they were in this movie. Uh, There is also a guy in this movie, I want to just point out, another weird for weird's sake character. The guy who probably took too many improv classes, the car dealer. The car dealer. dealer. manager. This kid, I I come from an improv background. That was some bad improv. What about the threesome that talks about when they're like, Wait, there was a threesome this. in this movie? Yeah, between Danny DeVito and his daughters. Um, <laughs> no way. I would then love this movie. <laughs> because, and it, you know why I know it's possible? There's no way he's their father. <laughs> but no, where he, you know when Danny DeVito sells the owner of the car dealership a car? Yeah. Um, and we're watching it from outside and the three guys ahead of it literally go like, watch this one. <laughs> Not exaggerating, and then they're like, hey, go sell a car to that one. And then he walks up and he goes, one's born every minute. And then the three of them, and I'm like, I know that was an improv audition. Yeah. I know those guys were fun, guys. And what? they're like, huh, I got a thousand. What? Uh huh. And it was just so was weird. The, the worst was- line of the whole movie, the improv line is uh, Danny DeVito is coming into the office and he goes, oh, hold on a second, I just gotta send off this important email. That was his, like, like, it was so, like, level one improv student. Wow. Just important email. Like, what the? But the scene I actually... It wasn't even important email. That makes it sound better. It was, like, no, something... No, it was just, I think like, it was. I'm send an email. Yeah, it was really... It, it wasn't was dumb. even important. Well, this was 2006 was. when sending an email was a pretty big deal. <laughs> <laughs> the scene where I actually felt very offended and I felt uh, very I, upset... I think we're going to have the same. I know feel the same We're going to have the same. Is the scene in which... Now, I guess, um, I'm sort of blinking on Maybe's name, her real name. Oh, yeah, Alia Shawkat. Yes, when she, her character's journey is that she's kind of frumpy and, and a sullen teenager. And then when the twins move across the street, they really kind of take sex her, her under up their wing. Take, yeah, take Let her under Let her date ring. Marines that does, are visiting town. Yeah, <laughs> right. But it goes both ways because she gives them from, Jane Austen. That's exactly right. No, Emily, Emily Dickinson. Dickinson. Emily Dickinson. No, Emily so, Dickinson. Should we play that scene? Sure. Oh, please. Right. I mean, that's got it going on. Oh. Damn, look at that. <laughs> yeah. 
it, right? By the way, they've been in a huge fight well, before. Dying, but right? now they're bonding yeah, for the first on, time. Man. Hey, hey, is it getting hot out here? Or is it just you, girl? Oh, oh nice dip. Uh, wow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Woo. Hey, baby, who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. Who's your daddy? <laughs> who's your daddy? Oh God, I'm your daddy. I'm your daddy. Oh, I'm your daddy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My God. Then they immediately run into a church to wash their eyes out with holy water. That is not an exaggeration. A church that has a PA system, though, because the PA comes on to alert them that there's the speed skating competition is starting, and it echoes through the church. Here's what, I do it, want, it, this is actually, it's a very offensive scene because they've been fighting this whole time and there's so much animosity between them. They can't seem to, you know, see eye to eye. There's nothing they can agree on. There's nothing they can agree on. And their wives have had hate enough. Each other. Their wives have had enough. What they connect on <laughs> and where they meet is verbally harassing. <laughs> attacking from the middle of women. a crowd of people they space. know this is the problem I and have by the way no one else looks into it no way, one else looks into it this is the problem I have with it is more on this line but go ahead no that's it but I have a big problem with but that but mine was more this is he's like the pinnacle he's like the mister like eye doctor of the town right. it's who very is very attitude. uptight and frigid and all of a sudden he's cat calling a super sexual Christmas show in the middle of this cute town <laughs> parade thing. Why that show would be happening, and now he's screaming out cat calls completely he's out of saying, character. He's I had saying a character things as though, problem. Yeah, he's saying a things as though he, he's at a that. strip club. Or, as, okay, if, or as if this town's... Um, the, 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 the version of this show that happens in this town, part of the tradition is that the men in the crowd <laughs> scream obscenities at the women on stage. And every if year they have their obeying, sexy show. Yeah, it's as, yeah. it's as if he's obeying those rules because it is clearly fine for him because DeVito's like, well, you're a man, right? We can agree on this, right? And they're like, oh, show us your titties, basically. <laughs> now, my issue is actually different than all three of yours. Which is, I feel like Matthew Broderick has never said those words in his life. life. Yeah. Well, and like, I think you're so right. Awkward. Suck my big hard dick. You know you want it. I'm gonna give it to yeah. you, you and, dirty girl. And by like, the that's way, what it that's, sounds like. that's that's right. And I think that in the scene, you can see that he's playing that. He's looking sort of per, for permission from Danny DeVito to say these things. But who's never your daddy? But it was so out of character. Who's your, who's your and daddy this was my so other problem sexual. with it. Is as they're doing their sexy Christmas, annual Christmas dance, they have, by at this point, they've done a couple moves where they have turned toward the audience numerous times. The whole right, dance has not just been here. And they have twirled behind. where you have clearly seen their face. And My, you are clearly looking right at them as you're no, yelling obscenities. They're, they're looking down low. <laughs> what you're misunderstanding is that they spent one at the, the twirl looking at the bum and, and, and lower part and then one at the boobs and then not until the third twirl did they see faces. And even then it's just I, because I agree they were with close Jason. to hair. I agree with Jason. But you know what? It's just so fucked up. What? Because it's like what? The, they're their children. They know their faces. Butts, boobs, hair. That's how it goes. That's what they were looking. That's the order. Boom, boom. And the boom, reason boom, why boom. It, by the way it plays into the rest of the story is Matthew Broderick's character is really resisting the idea that Alia is growing up and that she's becoming yes. a woman. Yep. And it's it's And this really, is how you become a woman. Well, and that and dancing that's sexy the basis at the Christmas of this festival. Fear, which is so fucked up, is that once he sees her that way, he wants to fuck her. Well, the thing <laughs> my, my problem, and I mean I I know that it's just simply for the joke. But it's not like, That's hey, looking good, or nice ass, no. or blah, blah, blah. Who's your daddy? Your daddy is something more that you say, like, who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. You like that? <laughs> oh, yeah. All I'm going to say is that. <laughs> you shout that out for Yeah. <laughs> Carrie. Oh, yeah, Carrie. Oh, you like, do you think Samantha likes this? <laughs> I want all of you to think about all that, all that all tonight when you're fucking each other. <laughs> and then start laughing and be like, were you thinking about it? I was too, yeah. 
Me too. And then, and then come. Well, I guess we can all just agree to the fact that Sabrina and Kelly Aldridge, the two twins in the movie, really, really paid off that they pra practiced for five hours a day for two weeks for that dance number. Five hours a day for two that weeks. Dance number is for that. You and I could do that dance number right now. Five that hours a day. Do it. Do it. Do it. Five hours a day. Five hours a day for two weeks. That is the excess of Hollywood. <laughs> Let's go into the audience. Let's see what kind of questions the audience has, maybe, as we... Raise your hand if you have something that we have not talked about, something that you saw. There's a couple things I still want to get to, too, but here we go. Don't take the mic. I'll hold it. Here we go. Your name, your favorite part of this movie, and your question. Uh, my name is Ian. My favorite part is when Danny DeVito becomes the really likable character that everyone's supposed to root for because he's the underdog. And uh, just going off of what you guys were talking about, uh, they, the actresses practice for five hour days for, for five hours a day for two weeks. Yes. And these, these, <laughs> characters, these characters obviously must have practiced a lot, and the parents had no idea they were practicing. Their Amazing plans. point. Great their point. Plans. Now, Amazing. don't get it confused, though. The their characters may have picked this up very quickly. Oh, Their yeah. characters, the actors, the actors man, especially yeah, those the actors twins. Had a time. The twins Stop. might have already worked out that dance. Like, that might be their thing. But I and they feel just, like, like uh, her in. Arrested D, would, her character would have needed more time. Right. <laughs> but you know what? Matthew was so distracted by all of the lights and his anger that he probably didn't notice. All of the lights. Before we ask one more question, I'm just realizing that was Danny DeVito worried at all that these lights being seen from space was just going to be a seasonal thing for him? He just wanted to be seen once. He wanted that once. He just wanted one time. One time. One time. He does clarify it too. He goes, I want my house to be seen from space. And everyone applauds. He goes, Outer space. <laughs> that is really? true. He did yeah. say that. He That's did funny. say outer. He does. He does yeah. take a moment. Uh, you're okay. Your your name. Uh, your favorite character in this movie. And your question. Go. Uh, my name's Connor. I'd say Danny DeVito because he's one of the only likable people in this movie. Um, we haven't. Yes, <laughs> interesting. People really like. I think voice. people's love for DeVito <laughs> is winning Clouding out over him in this yeah. movie. No, but he is you more likable than Frank Reynolds Bronson. in this movie. You, I don't. I, I don't want to see him win. As the movie progresses, I like him less and less. Here we go. You're fine. Well, I do love him, and it's, it's always so many. Um, but he forged a signature on a car that, that, that oh, never God. comes into play again. What nope. was that? Oh, You're there's... right, because they, they set up a dare, essentially. The speed yeah. skating. And then he wins. DeVito well, no, wins. No, no, DeVito yeah. tricks him. Some brother steals... has to buy the car. Right. Yeah. But, well, but he also steals a car. In the, in he the... also steals yeah. a car, steals a Christmas tree. Correct. It's a lot. Sales. That's it. Things a con man might do. <laughs> if I was playing $25,000 Pyramid and you said, steals a Christmas tree, steals a car, I might be Danny like, things, DeVito. things a con man might do. Uh, things things well, a thief might do. But there is a darkness to his character and his history. I mean, we find out that he's been in, they're in serious debt, it seems. Just noticing these people have my face on their shirt. <laughs> wow. All right, here we go. Your name, your question... Uh, and but before your question, uh, your favorite uh, your favorite character, um, Susan Park at the end. Great, <laughs> that great, you win. Yes, yes. yes. And my yes. question is, what is the time scale of this movie? Because they were able to do the light thing from the hotel, cook dinner, call all of the neighbors to come bring lights. Just. What was the time? Did this is over? Well, yeah, this is a, that's a crazy, the end, Christmas yeah, that's Eve Christmas in this Eve. town is about a week. Yeah. A yeah. solid week. Yeah, Christmas, yeah, you're right. Like, a week's worth of activities happens during one night. <laughs> Including MTV getting from, yeah. from MTV New York City. to, to Massachusetts. Massachusetts. By the way, why is MTV the pinnacle of being, like, MTV is going to cover it. Danny DeVito would be 60 minutes would be interesting to Danny DeVito, you would think. Or so I would love it if Mike Wallace was in this movie. Again, that's who this movie was for. I Check would... it out. Sway is coming to our house to do an exclusive report. <laughs> I don't know if we could do the MTV interview. The Fuse interview is going to be here earlier. We've got to do... <laughs> All right, your name, uh, your favorite character, and your question. 
Uh, my name's Drew, definitely the sexy sheriff. And uh, <laughs> there's a moment where Matthew Broderick talks about growing up basically in the Dust Bowl, eating french fries and a milkshake for Christmas. <laughs> Yet he went on to uh, have this amazing optometry practice. His journey is amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. It's that's American America. Dream. That is I mean, America. By the way, I don't know if it's an amazing optometry practice. I think he's the only game in town. <laughs> Which, by the way, by the I actually way. wanted to bring you back. That who's your daddy now makes more sense. He's an optometrist, which is very close to dentistry, and dentists are all up to weird shit. So I feel like optometrist, he's, he's ready to yell at who's your daddy. I don't know, because I feel like optometrists, by giving you the gift of sight, are only letting you see the weird stuff they're going to do to you. Um, all right, your name... Oh, I want you to see this in exact clarity. Your name, your, uh, your favorite character, and your question. Patrick... Cal Penn? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it just bothers me that uh, they show Google Maps at night. I've never seen a night. <laughs> That's a great, that is a great. That is a great, great. point. An unbelievable point. Yeah, and again, again, we go back to that idea that in the movie makes no sense because ultimately uh, there's no live satellite images going no. on at any point. You can't just pull up the lives. That would be uh, very detrimental. The movie makes no sense for so oh, many so reasons. I literally when the lights on the house do go on, when the lights on the house do go on, the people in the computer center at Cal Penn <laughs> University are, have to turn away from their monitors it's because the footage being broadcast from space is so bright, so bright. as to blind them on the computer. Go fuck well, no, yourself no, no, no. this movie. What? Boy. <laughs> Jay, Jason, are you telling Good me call. that sometimes when you watch a movie like this, when the lights come on really bright, like it doesn't hurt your eyes sometimes? No, like, you don't have to enough, turn down the... I ride enough, the brightness. it does not. I oh, mean, I ride the brightness all the time. Brightness and volume. I'm you know always what? You know what? A, a computer monitor cannot put out enough light to make you turn away. <laughs> Maybe if that the brightness only is really thing that can make up. me turn away is an image on yeah. the computer monitor, <laughs> which I can send you guys some really uh, fucking weird stuff. All right. Oh your, boy. Your uh, your name. Your favorite character. Your question. Uh, my name's Connor. My favorite character is Fred Armisen's. And, Spread uh, Armisen? <laughs> yes. Spread. It sounded like you said um, Spread Armisen. It did. That's, that's Fred Armisen's porn um, name. Spread. Spread Armisen. Uh, Jason touched on this a little bit already, but I'm just amazed at how nonplussed everybody is at all the crazy shit going on. Multiple times Christmas trees catch on fire, one of which is in their house. And they just kind of stand there cracking jokes. They about do, they quit. Yeah. They, they yeah. do quips. And we haven't even of... talked about that Christmas tree scene. No. First of all, you mean when the tree lit on fire because gas was near it? No, that's or the other well, do you mean oh. the time when a military grade firework? Oh, oh, oh. Can we that talk doesn't about exist. this? <laughs> Can we talk about this scene? Oh, let, well, wait, I actually wait. thought there was a I missed opportunity care. because <laughs> missed opportunity there because they, they've established that in this town there's the Christmas guy there's the 4th of July guy and then there's the Memorial Day guy yeah he offered so, Danny DeVito could be Halloween guy right which he by the way for to... DeVito that would be a good gig that sounds I, great right? I see a sequel of this movie about home haunts sounds great I would like to see a sequel about home haunts but I assumed we were gonna go to the 4th of July guy for those fireworks it's literally like they set stuff up and you're just like what Okay, let's just I'll watch that play out. Let's just watch that play out. Like the sheriff does the thing, or this urn is the most expensive thing in our home. <laughs> but that is the whole movie. We'll probably is based never on... mention that again. There are episodes of Benny Hill that are more, more subtle, subtle than this movie. <laughs> And if you don't know what oh. Benny Hill is, right. get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Wait, yeah, sorry, this guy. No, but seriously, go home and watch it if you don't know what Benny Hill is. Your, your, your name, your title for this movie, if you could title it anything, and your question. Go. Uh, my name is Chris. Uh, Deck, may, I, it sounds like they just want to punch the halls. Is that what they're talking about? Just... Oh. No, his oh name God. is Hall. His name is... His, his so, name, oh, first name is Deck Hall. Buddy Hall. Oh, oh. his last name was Hall. Guys! All right, I'll take it. 
Good, wow, standing ovation for that. I like it. Yes, here's the question. So my favorite character is definitely uh, Harley from Lost. This Lost. question better live Didn't up to that. ask about your favorite character. <laughs> he had a beer sign around his, when they asked for lights, he brought the beer. Anyway, um, so when... when uh, How did he power that neon sign? Uh, so when, when Buddy's light show doesn't work, uh, the whole town shows up to support him, and they pull out their flip phones. And uh, oh, this is the best. To try to try and power this light show to be seen from space, they open their dimly lit razors, <laughs> their razor phones, and they hold them up. And like about half of them are holding them up, right? Yeah. And then the kid points out that no, the plug is just not plugged in. So all that all that effort was for nothing. Oh no no, that effort was so that Kristen Chenoweth could sing a goddamn yeah, song. Yeah. That was a good, I forgot all exactly. about that. No, no, Here's what I'm wondering See, that's now. where you're wrong, guy. Here's what I'm wondering, because I don't, so most of the townspeople did not know that the, the switch wasn't turned, right? Nobody so, knew. Yeah. So no nobody one knew, knew. not but, even Danny DeVito. No, but, but, so they, in their minds, are we leaving them thinking, that, <laughs> are they thinking to themselves, the this power of song, the power of community, community. the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm just wishing really song. hard. Yeah, I, no, is that, see, is that I, what they're thinking? They think, think it's the so. magic of Christmas. It's I Santa. Think they don't think, in, in my mind, they don't think they're going to be seen from space. They just think now they're having like a, a community, a town right. moment. I get that, but I, I, I'm saying when the lights, when the lights come do, back on, yeah. are they thinking that they did that? Oh, I see. Yeah. I see, I see. I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, good question. Was anyone else just concerned that the lights that are on this tree literally are like more lights than would be on, you know what I mean, all of Disneyland or something, and it's all one little <laughs> plug? Like, well, I want to talk that about... That can easily sort of loosen. It's like, it's... My, my... Electricity doesn't work that way. We didn't talk about this, but I think it's worth just bringing up for this one point that when Matthew Broderick decides to cut the power, he dresses up like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. Yeah. And his plan is to simply use the leather man to cut the box open yeah. and then throw a snowball and inside throw it. Yeah. But he is so outfitted. How about... Yeah. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, go ahead. How about the fact that in order to execute this piece of shit action, which he is sends, basically to walk across the street, he sends his son in pajamas yeah. to, the, to the top of a telephone pole in the middle of winter. You have his son what? wanted to do it. His, he sends his son to do the most dangerous thing while he saunters across the On yard and throws, and throws a snowball into a, into a circuit breaker or You something. have brought up the thing that bothered me the most the entire movie. I love you. Is the snow. The, oh, the snow, snow never moves. Never melts. It never melts. There's a snowflake that lands on Dum Dum Chenoweth's mouth. <laughs> and it is there for two and a half and minutes. And if you look at like the walkway up to their house, the snow never moves. People are outside in robes constantly. Yeah. There is no cold fine. air. There's no cold air. This is just, uh, this is like on the universal lot or something. It, literally, and you can see the sunny day, and I seriously, there was one shot where Chris and Davis sort of gave like a half-ass like, Ugh. and and I was just like, was the director so caught up in everyone's journey and making sure everyone was nailing no. that part yeah. no. that he forgot to go, oh, and by the way, it's 14 degrees outside, yeah. and you're in a mini skirt, so play that too. Nope. No need, because nope. the comedy was taking you through. I do know where it was shot. It was shot in the place where Matthew Broderick's soul was. Uh, it was a really uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. A lot of free land there. Uh, one more question from the audience. Who has a good question? Where are some ladies with some questions? All right, here we go. All right. What would you title the movie? What's your name and what's your question? Here you go. My name's Shay. I would title the movie, like, Sad Dads. That's great. Um, really I good. That. I was just wondering, Danny DeVito seems he wants to find his passion and can't decide what he wants to do. He should be an audiovisual engineer for, like, Dead Mouse or something. <laughs> yeah, That's because, by the way, but, but, but what they also set up about him is that he's a salesman, and, and it seems like he great, does... Great, really good one. He, he does can sell anything. He can sell snow to an Eskimo. Here's what's problematic. They should have used that the in the movie. The premise is that he can sell anything. I have a so couple things. It seems like he loves to used. sell. He just hasn't found the right product. Well, what you, what you see in the co when he sells the car is he does it, and he's like, yeah. And then he's like, oh. he's like, oh. it's almost like too easy to conquer. 
You know what I mean? That happens a couple of times and where that's he like. That's why he has to go to space. Yeah, it's like it's like it's almost like you know the why would I want to be a member of a club that would have me as a member? You know what I mean? Like like so speaking of Deadmas. <laughs> I was gonna play the scene where where Danny DeVito is DJing so much that uh, smoke, smoke. Yep, comes off do. the DJ table. Please do. Uh, again, I'm not a DJ, June. You are. You actually know stuff about being a DJ. I do. I know a little bit about it. Uh, oh, here you go. Watch this. You know this. as much about DJing as you do about tornadoes. <laughs> that is why I brought it up. Where does it fall on the scale? You know the most about DJing, I DJing, would imagine. DJing, I mean, it's DJing gorillas, tornadoes, and... Street Fighter. And, yeah, DJing. And, and I believe, is science? Science? Lasers, lasers. Lasers, <laughs> I'd say DJing is up top. DJing is up and top. And everything falls below. Everything DJing follows. Everything follows DJ. Update your charts, nerds. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is uh, Dan DeVito in his Dead Mouse performance. <laughs> When was that video shot of Danny DeVito waving? When he was getting on his plane out of town. Did the kid? <laughs> did the kid just wave at the picture of yes, DeVito on the house? Yes, he did. In your mood, your mood. Heavy metal. By the way, this would definitely get a noise complaint, right? I mean, of oh yeah. Course. What an amazing show. And Danny DeVito said he's going to play that show until four in the morning every day. That's well, because for him at that point, this is, this is, his turn is interesting because for him at that point, okay, it's no on. Can longer... We do this? You're the director. I'm Danny DeVito. Okay? Yeah. I don't understand my motivation in this scene. Like, <laughs> why, why am I doing this? Yeah. For you at this point in the movie, uh -huh. for your character, yeah. Buddy Hall... Buddy Hall. Yep, Buddy Hall. E. Yeah. E. It's e. no longer about getting your house seen from space. Well, it's not. That, no. That's what I thought my whole it's movie was about. I, I know. <laughs> like now being, being it's, visible. Now it's about, we're taking the global local. So it's about being seen from across the street cool. in a major, major wow. way. Okay. How much am I getting to do this movie? Four million dollars. Four million dollars. Hey. <laughs> I'll say the lines. Fuck you. <laughs> Wait, yeah, you, got the plane, just, you got the plane ready? This is my problem with the movie is that it doesn't... Travolta, guess up my jet. Yeah, guess up the jet. <laughs> he no longer really cares here about being seen from space. It's about just creating a huge problem for Matthew Brown. Oh, I was going to say, I thought at this point it just came down to he has to do this for himself. Oh, that's interesting. What about the other neighbors? <laughs> I would love to see a movie with they the other no neighbors. no other neighbors. They're in a cul-de-sac. Cul yeah. I just realized, by the way, in that scene, that he's DJing and you're hearing record scratches. Yep. But that's not something that exists in, in modern does, DJing on does iPod. Does traffic go entirely around his house? <laughs> We're looking at a like, screenshot is his right house now. on an island that's in the saying. cul de sac? Literally, there are no other houses. I think they even referenced that. What? Yeah, like, they're, they're like moving. by themselves. I ask you, what is this? <laughs> like, I literally have that written so many times. Like, <laughs> what is this? Exclamation is point. Is this movie a prank? <laughs> Perhaps. Um, I will say, here's some interesting facts about this movie. Uh, the budget. One guess what the budget was? $40 million. $40. $51 million. And it's all on the screen, you guys. <laughs> and uh, opening, opening week was 12, $12 million. It says most films on our show, right, have had terrible openings, but at least almost all of them have made back their money over the course of their lifetime. This movie has still not made back its money. Amazing. Of 51 million. Uh, oh. Directed by the guy who directed Big Mama's House 2. <laughs> and Big Mama, like father, like son. And also, Blossom. yeah. And, oh, well, Blossom, I, mean, I think yes. like, hey, you know. Like, and the writer also wrote Big Mama, Santa Claus 2. Their team. And the Black Honeymooners <laughs> movie. When it works, it works. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, you heard that right, the Black Honeymooners movie. <laughs> Wait, is there any chance it was actually called the Black Honeymooners movie? I have to double check. I don't think so. I wish 
It was also nominated for a Razzie for the worst excuse for family entertainment. <laughs> That is a, a new category, category I've never seen. That is... <laughs> um, this should just win that every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously we had an opinion about this movie, but it is now time to read a second opinion. <laughs> These are five-star reviews called from Amazon. To be honest, this is really hard uh, because there are very few of them and I wouldn't even know if these are the best, but I figured I'd have to read a couple. Here they are. Uh, this one is from a woman in the Ukraine. <laughs> um, okay. Please here we read go. it in a Ukrainian accent. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. It goes. It doesn't deserve five stars completely since it's not in the same category as It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> But I decided to give them five stars anyway because our house in this film, because in our house, that's, uh, this, this is the Ukraine, because in our house, it's considered a Christmas classic. Five stars. Matthew Broderick wrote that. Oh, <laughs> oh that poor family. Um, <laughs> can you imagine if this was like what you were excited to watch with your family? And then you grew up to be old enough to know like, oh no. Like, we watched garbage. Here is another one by Veggie Girl. Um, I bought this movie. I thought this movie was great. Some other movies that are part of my Christmas tradition are Christmas Vacation, The Santa Claus, Elf, Scrooge, Trapped in Paradise, Jingle All the Way, and March of the Wooden Soldiers. I only list them so you get an idea of the kinds of movies I like. <laughs> and if you like then it's a good guess you're gonna like this movie as well. But Just that's seeing weird, how they. She, she implying that we might think she's listing them like to name drop movies. <laughs> my, uh, my sincere hope is that if you went to the Amazon page for every one of those other movies, she wrote a review for that movie <laughs> using the same list, adding this for those movies. Just seeing how they lit up the house in this movie is worth the watch. It looks like he has a TV screen on his roof. <laughs> it's very cool. Five stars. That review was written in the 90s. Uh, <laughs> I wish that. That, it was, that was actually sense. written, by the way, that was written on, I just saw this now, oh, December no. 25th, Christmas oh. you know 2007. They were, they were. So someone on Christmas Day was like, let me get to Amazon and write this up. You know that what? Is so. Get moved. But there's a lot of emotion in Guys, this movie. That really Guys, that really upsets me. That's really, that's real. That's actually really sad. That's really sad. But am I like? Because I'll say this: like for this person, this is that movie, and that's a bummer. For me, it's Love Actually. I will watch Love Actually on Christmas, and then I will want to go and write an Amazon review. <laughs> oh, okay. I love really? that movie. I'm like, I'm a sucker for that movie. You like Rick from The Walking Dead in there? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> to me, you are perfect. Come, Come on, on, guys. <laughs> as Nobody we wrap up... Actually? Uh, as we wrap up, anything that we missed, anything we want to chat about? I, I know we didn't talk about the toxic spit from the camel. Oh, we did, yeah, we didn't talk about falling into the camel shit or the toxic... And the, the great thing about Matthew Broderick is when he does the Mission Impossible is what we're talking about. He falls into the camp... Oh, there's also a live nativity scene on Danny DeVito's lawn. Which he hires actors and camels. Where the money's coming from, we don't know. Who, where is the money coming from? We don't know. He's he loses. a con man. And they're very because much he's in a debt. They're in debt, and he loses his job halfway through the movie. Guys, he sells the urn. Yeah, yeah but, but that, was way way later. that was Not later. That was way later. That was way later. That was for the LED screen. So Broderick falls in a huge pile of camel shit, then looks up at the camel, and the camel spits on him. And he's like, oh, I can't catch him. He goes, I, But the camel I, yeah, yeah. spits on him in, like, what, like, ooze from the Teenage Mutant Ninja it's, Turtle yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah. he got like, slime. Slash, sla like, slash, like a Bukaki video. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He basically gets, like, green jizzed on. At which point, he then gets up and he gets out of the camel thing, 
There's no spit or shit on it. And I thought of that too, and I was like, that is a guy who's like, fuck this, I nope. do one shot. I did, I did it. <laughs> I did and it, done. and I won't do it in it if it's not on like any one other shot. I do it's one like, take. like It's like my favorite joke in Ghostbusters where Bill Murray only has the slightest marshmallow like, on the tip of his head. Everyone else is covered. He, like, he was like, no, um, do not pour a marshmallow on me. Uh, I was slimed earlier in the movie. I did it. That's fine. I would like to mention the nude sleeping bag scene. Oh, we have that too. Oh, yeah. That is definitely worth mentioning. I thought that that was a funny scene. I think the premise of that scene is really funny. It could have been funny. I do. But the lead up is bananas. Well, the lead up is insane. But just the idea that, you know, Danny DeVito took off all his clothes to save his life. I mean, I thought that would be someone, funny, but what's weird about it... Uh, someone... Uh, <laughs> Avril Haley, our, our clip puller, she uh, pulled uh, a, a picture of Matthew uh, Broderick from Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Matthew Broderick uh, in the hospital that bed That is here. amazing. It's double, just get to see oh the ghost of Christmas past <laughs> and uh, the ghost of the Christmas future. Just purely for the people here. No, so what, if that is a funny scene. I think it could have been. I think let's what, play it, what let's, it let's needed play it was and for then DeVito to be well, on top of him. Here we go. Let's hear it. Hang on. What's happened, just so you know contextually, because yes. this is after the sled, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So what's happened is DeVito, okay, guys, get ready, <laughs> has a life-size Santa sled with horses that he has duct tape antlers to. So then they convince Matthew Broderick to put on a Santa suit, get in the thing, and then the, the horses, of course, take off. He should, goes all the way through town, gets on the ice of a yeah. lake, and falls in. In a okay. beautiful CGI scene. Oh, yep. it's gorgeous. Uh, right out of Avatar. Here yeah. we go, so. to this. Yep. He's coming too. I think he's gonna be all right. Where am I? We're in the back seat of your wife's car on the way to the hospital. You warming up? Yeah. Where are my clothes? You were freezing to death. We had to get you out of there. Where are your clothes? I had to get your body temperature up, so I stripped us both down and zipped us into this sleeping bag. Trust me, it works. I've done it a half a dozen times. So a naked Danny DeVito is caressing Matthew Broderick. I just want you guys to realize, not one laugh. <laughs> yeah, but... Like, not even like a... <laughs> he's zero. People he's done that, that like, half a dozen times? Or so. Or so. Um, I did want to read this one, scene, one thing about that scene. The sleeping bag scene is the director's favorite scene in the movie. Obviously. Thank they you. did nine takes of it and then discovered the camera wasn't on. <laughs> That's astonishing. That, I wrote as I'm watching this how much they all were standing around the monitors, chuckling, <laughs> cut. <laughs> oh my God, that was so funny. Okay, let's do that oh, one more see, time. Oh, see, I bet they weren't at oh, all. Yeah, I, I bet. It's pretty this, joyless. I think they brought, direction. this brought them all to life. This really? Was, they were waiting. This they were the loving scene, yeah. it. Oh, oh yeah. I, feel like, I feel like the guy, the director, like it was at Video Village, it was like, all right. <laughs> okay and then look walked over to where those guys were and was like guys that one was great but let's do it one more time and like I feel like he had to like like try um, to convince because them. in a way this is this is a scene that makes Danny DeVito appear actually very lovable yep a- and I think the way the scene could have played out is Matthew Broderick wakes up Danny DeVito's on top of him all over him ooh try- <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to but, warm him up it's a sexier way <laughs> trying to warm him up yeah we will find out later but at the time we don't know what's going so on so what do you think's going on well Matthew Broderick's really resisting and oh, trying yeah. <laughs> but I feel like and trying to get out of there and oh. Danny DeVito's like stop who's your daddy <laughs> <laughs> And he's getting even more physical with him. That oh, scene yeah. could have been a love amazing. Scene. What? What's that <laughs> now? <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, would you recommend this movie? I don't. We really don't even have to go no. over this. No, 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 no. Not in a million years. 
This is unless, not a classic. Unless you want to watch like sadness on screen. No. I do remember. No. This is the Here's one thing I do say. remember, I think- and I, I maybe I'm not exaggerating this. I, I don't know the exact dates, but I remember this movie came out in like November. And it was on DVD in December. Like, I know that to be true. Like, it was like something, it was like the next week. I mean, I will say, I think I do have a very long leash for Christmas movies. So do I. I, I By the way, I sat down into this with, like, going, okay, it's going to be whatever, but I kind of am a sucker for a shitty Christmas movie. movie. I'm in. So, in that sense... I've never been this furious. Yeah. I, I mean, you know me. Am I usually this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, you are. In that sense, like, and, and there are some Christmas movies, like I, I told Paul, Mixed Nuts is one of my favorite Christmas movies. I don't really know if it's a good movie or not. I I've think it is. That. Steve Martin and yeah. I never Efron, saw it. Adam Sandler and yeah. Madeline Kahn. I think it's a good movie, but the Christmas of it all mm-hmm. really does take me away oh, to another. The Family movie. Stone. Oh, uh, yes. is that good? Stone. Great it, movie. It grows on that, you. To is me, a that's a perfect example of, I am certain it is not a good movie. But, but it weirdly it grows on you when it's on cable. Movie. And and it's like, a Christmas like, movie. The Christmas, the Christmas of it is the band aid that makes me think it's a good movie. Exactly. Because it, and when the Rachel you McAdams of it. You sort of give it a little slack. I think you're doing that a little with Love Actually. Love it. I think Although there are legitimately the four storylines legit- that are total garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so but yeah, this one I guess doesn't in even. All, I I appreciated the Christmas element of it, but what I but I don't think I could, in good faith, recommend this movie. <laughs> I will also just point out if you're starting a Christmas movie, what's the best place to start it in an optometrist's office? Like, yep. I mean, there was you nothing even like there was no even big fanfare. Like, I was sort no, of wondering um, though now, as I think about that old lady and how she got hit by the snowball in the beginning. You couldn't quite tell because she's looking at these two lenses and one is obviously so much clearer than the other one. The other one's completely out of focus. But we never really know which one she lands on. And it almost seems like she prefers the out of focus lens. And then says, I look hot. And then says, I look hot. But I I'm, I'm, guess I'm wondering as if she did prefer it. And so she really couldn't see. And, and then she didn't she see the snowball? the snowball. But I feel like the she snowball ha- came at her fast. <laughs> fast um, and furious. I did. Uh, uh, too soon. Oh, too soon. Uh, I really didn't mean to. I really soon. wasn't too saying soon. that. Guys, and we are have soon. to end. Oh. And now we have to end. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. Oh, did not mean to end the show on that kind of note, but give it up for Andrea Savage. She's amazing. And a big thank you to everybody here who makes this show possible. The entire crew and staff at Largo, uh, Cody, our engineer at Earwolf, Avril Haley, who cuts our clips. We have Nathan Kiley, who does our research. Uh, Leanna Waldron, who does all of our graphic design. Katie Dwyer, or Dyer, I'm sorry, Katie Dyer, who does all of our all of our cool social media stuff. Without them, we could not do this show. And without you, we couldn't do it either. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>